So what I want to do right now is walk you through everything you need to know about ACL injuries. Like something popped in my, in my knee. It popped out of place. Popped in my phone. Are you okay? Twist your knee. No, don't, don't twist. You automatically think everything's over. It's, it's pretty common, isn't it? Huh? Particularly once it happens to you, you start realizing everybody else that's had it. We like to look at ACLs as injuring and ending seasons and not careers. All right, so today we're gonna to talk all about ACL injury, everything from what happens when you hurt it, all the way to how you're gonna rehab it back after the surgery. And we're here to talk to Dr. Connor. Good, good to see you again. Yeah, good to see how you. And not only is he the team physician for several of the sports teams here in Charlotte, but he is an ACL expert who has been doing some really interesting research on ACLs with NFL athletes. Yeah. Yeah. So he tore his ACL here? Yeah, when he was here. I recently uh, looked at seven years worth of uh, NFL players coming out of the NFL draft and found that within two years of when they were drafted, 9% of them tore their ACL, which is a really high number. 9% of players in the NFL are getting injured over a two-year period. Within two years of when they're drafted, yeah. Let me put this in perspective. There are roughly 250,000 ACL injuries a year. If you're a college football player, you have a 16% chance of tearing your ACL in those four years. Soccer, basketball, lacrosse, and other high impact sports have similar statistics. If you ski, you should know that one out of every 900 skiers on the slope on any given day will tear their ACL. Point is, it's really common. But first, let us start with some ACL basics. The ACL is a ligament inside the knee. And what the ACL does, not only does it prevent the lower bone, the tibia, from translating forward like so, but it also keeps it from twisting. You see the twist, and you see the stress on that ACL there as it stopping and then changing directions very quickly. If you try to do that with a torn ACL, your knee buckles. And every time your knee buckles like so, it, it twists on the meniscus in here and can chew up the knee, so to speak. It kind of causes further damage to the meniscus, which is what we want to try to avoid. Clearly, nobody wants to tear their ACL. But if you do, the torn ligament can be surgically replaced with a tendon. And Dr. Connor walked us through the three most common options. One option is to make an incision kind of from here to here. Yep. And we'll take the middle third of that tendon, take a little bit of bone from your kneecap, a little bit of bone from here, and then we weave that in your knee and that's your new ACL. All right. All right? That's called the patellar tendon. That's got a very good track record. It'll give you a nice stable knee. It has been used for many, many years, okay? There's no right answer here, but the downside to that is that it's the bigger of the three surgeries, yeah. meaning it's a bigger incision. We're taking bone from the front of the knee. There has been shown to be a higher incidence of pain in the front of the knee, like tendonitis. It's very unusual, but you can have an injury to your kneecap. You know, it may happen one every several hundred, but if it happens to you, it's a big deal, yeah. right? Another option is to say, okay, I don't want to mess with my own knee. Yeah. And so I'm going to take the, the cadaver or the allograft. So that's taking it from, from a donor. Yep. And we get all sorts of sizes, all sorts of configurations of it. But we just make a small little incision here yep. just to weave it in. The downside of that, there is a potential of, of rejection or infection a little bit higher because it's not your own okay. tissue. But the biggest issue with the allograft is that there's a higher chance that it will re-tear. And that chance may be two and a half to five or six times higher chance. Right. Instead of messing with this, we sneak under here and get these two yeah. hamstring tendons right here. That one works very well. We know that there's two of them. We weave it up and weave it back down and it's four thickness. And the strength of those four is about two and a half times your normal ACL. So right. it's super strong. You'll feel like you pulled a hamstring for three or four weeks. But like we just talked about, the ACL rehab trumps everything. To recap, the three most common choices a patient can choose are using the patellar tendon, an allograph, or the hamstring tendon. Now each has certain benefits and drawbacks. And of course, at this point, that is where your doctor can help you decide. But if you're still healthy, it begs the question, how do you not injure your ACL. <laughs> the only real way to avoid an ACL injury is to avoid activities. And, and nobody wants to do that in this day and age. But there are some things you can do to mitigate the risk of ACL injuries. Maintaining core strength, core flexibility has been shown to be very important, like hip flexibility, for instance. Having good techniques for jumping and landing and having good strength to where the knees don't buckle down. But when an athlete will land, and they land strong, so their whole body takes the stress rather than buckling on their knees. A lot of the same exercises that are used to prevent 
prevent ACLs are used in the rehab after an ACL reconstruction, particularly after the ACL is healed. So it takes uh, three months or so for the ACL to, to completely heal where we're confident in its healing. And then we start really focusing on some of those same factors that we use to try to prevent it in the first place. Thanks for watching. If you've just injured your ACL, here's a good video to watch on what to expect for rehabbing. Also, don't forget to watch our Ligaments Basics video, subscribe, and stay tuned for more great sportology videos coming out all the time.